Today's video is going to be a brief video. I just wanted to show you a circuit which I have been using on my electric hot water heater for the past four years. If you don't have a tankless water heater or if you do not have a hot water heater timer installed, then you may want to have a circuit like you're going to see right here. Now I don't use a lot of hot water. I use hot water primarily for showering. I very rarely use it for dishes because using a good detergent will get the job done. And for laundry, I usually use cold water. There's no need to have the water heater maintaining hot water all day long. So this is an on-demand circuit. What I have is a switch on the wall. When I push the button, it'll turn on the hot water heater for a set duration. Once that duration has passed, the water heater turns off. The water heater will never turn on again unless you push that button. Once the button's pressed, the cycle repeats for the same amount of time. The circuit that I'm showing you right now can be used for any 120 or 240 volt circuit. It does not have to be for your water heater. The circuit is very simple. Once again, 555 timer. The timer is set up monostable, not A-stable. And what determines how long the 555 keeps the circuit activated is the resistor here and the capacitor here. At the time this circuit was made, I did not have a lot of large value capacitors around, so what I ended up using was a 10 microfarad in series with a 75 meg. I did have plenty of high valued resistors around, so I used that. If you want the circuit to run longer, now the way this is set up between the 75 meg and the 10 microfarad, it runs for around 16 minutes, but this is not what I have mine set up as. Mine uses a 22 microfarad, so when the button is pressed right over here, between B and ground, it'll turn the circuit on for around 32 minutes, which is more than enough. Most hot water heaters, within about 15 minutes of turning them on, you should have plenty of hot water to take a normal shower. If you're the type that likes to have the water running for 20 minutes, a half an hour, then you're going to want to make sure that the circuit runs longer, or you turn it on sooner. The circuit runs off of a 12 volt, 350 milliamp, 240 volt transformer. Whatever circuit you're using the power from, in my case it's being powered from the water heater circuit, which is 240 volts, so I use a 240 volt step down transformer to 12 volts, and the current rating of the transformer is 350 milliamps. Whatever relay that you use, make sure it can handle the current of the load, or in my case the water heater, and make sure that the relay coil, the current that the coil draws, will not exceed the rating of the transformer or this transistor. Down here is the transformer, the power supply, has a 200 milliamp fuse in series with one of the 120 volt legs. On the step down side, the 12 volts, the alternating current goes into a diode bridge, a full wave, or you can make it like you see here, out of four 1N4001 rectifier 1 amp diodes. You take the negative here to the negative of an electrolytic capacitor, a 2200 microfarad, 25 volt, and the positive goes to the capacitor as well. Positive here, negative there, and then you take your output, and that connects to there and there, and the negative here goes to all these points and that whole lower rail. You don't have to use a 2200 microfarad. I used it because I wanted to have as little ripple as possible coming off of the transformer. You could probably get by with no problem using a 470 microfarad or even a 1000 microfarad. Just make sure the voltage is higher than 16 because most transformers when there is no load being applied, you may have 18 or 20 volts. So make sure you use a 25 volt capacitor on that transformer with the bridge rectifiers. You have a 10K resistor, quarter watt. That's between pin number two and pin number four. Pin four and eight are connected together and between the top rail, the positive rail of 12 volts and the pin eight and four, it goes to the resistor, in my case a 75 meg which ties into pin 7. Pin 7 goes into pin 6, just jumper those together, and from pin 6 you have a 10 microfarad, or whatever you may desire for the time frame you're looking for, going between pin 6 and the negative rail. 
pin 1 to the negative rail and a 103 or a 0 .01 microfarad between pin 5 and the negative rail as well. The triggering of the circuit is done from pin 2 and the negative rail. When the button is pushed, power will be supplied through the 1N4003 diode or higher and it goes into this junction here which is A, flows through a red LED, 1K to ground. You have your power indicator. After point A, it goes into a 1K resistor quarter watt into the base of a 2N4401 transistor. Now the reason why I chose a 2N4401 is because it can handle more current in case your relay coil draws more current. Try and find a relay that does not draw too much current. Like I said earlier, if you draw too much, then you're going to have to increase your power supply to make sure you have the current there to be able to supply that current into the relay coil. In my case, the relay coil is a double pole, double throw, and that's what you see right here. These two right here, one going up, this one going up, they're not connected together electrically, but they are mechanically connected in such a way so when one pulls down, the other one goes with it. When my relay has no power, what I do is I take the normally open connections each one of these goes to the water heater power supply and over here on the left is the mains power supply coming in 120 over here and 120 volts here so once the circuit triggers these two legs here swing down transferring power from line to load you can also use just a single pole single throw or you can use a single pole double throw which would be another one here going out and you would have a normally open and normally closed. So just make sure your relay can handle the current and it's got the proper configuration. The control switch for the circuit is centrally located inside the house so what I had to do is have a wire run from the metal enclosure by the water heater over to the switch mounted on the wall. The wire you can use for that would be at a minimum a two pair 20 gauge telephone cable and what you're going to do is one of the wires, you're only going to need three out of the four, one wire connects to the negative rail, one wire will be ran from point A to flow through your LED and resistor to ground where the switch is mounted, and another wire will be run from point B which is where the switch is to ground. So you're going to have point A, point B, and a ground. And it's as simple as that. I'm now going to show you the switch that I made, which is mounted on the wall to activate the circuit. You're looking at my switch, which is installed in the main part of the house. The plate I made, it's three quarters of an inch wide, two and a half inches long. I took a unibit to drill out the hole for the LED and another hole for the momentary push button, which is a normally open switch. It's spring loaded. When you press it, the circuit will activate and the LED power indicator will come on. Once the power indicator goes off, that would indicate power is no longer being supplied to the relay coil and the circuit that you're controlling will now be off, or in my case, the water heater will be off. You're now looking at the circuit which I installed inside this empty timer control box. I have my 240 volt line coming in and I have the 240 volt line going out to the heater. Up top, you can see the blue wire. This is the low voltage wire going to the push button on the wall. This is a telephone cable. There's four pairs inside of here. I only use three wires as shown in the schematic. You can see the circuit is installed inside this 35 millimeter little plastic bottle to keep humidity and moisture out of it. Because of the 75 mega ohm resistor being used in the circuit, I want to make sure that humidity has no effect on the circuit. So that's why it's in a plastic container. These are all silicone filled connectors. Moisture will not get in there to cause any problems. Now the relay you see here I found in the trash. This is a 240 volt double pole double throw 30 amp relay so it was perfect. I added across the power transformer which is 220 volt. I added across the output a simple power indicator to let me know that the transformer is working and supplying power to the rest of the circuit. This is nothing more than a blue LED in series with a 2.7K ohm resistor across the output of the transformer. The circuit that you see here 
has been in use for approximately four years and I've had zero problems with the circuit and it's used pretty much on a daily basis. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.